My name is Melissa Carden. I'm a professor of management at Pace University in New York. I'm talking about a paper called Measuring Entrepreneurial Passion. I'm Matt Wood. I'm an associate professor of entrepreneurship at Baylor University. Our paper is entitled Past as Prologue in Action Decisions and Subsequent Action Judgments. Sure, my name is Andrew Corbett. I'm a professor of entrepreneurship at Babson College. I'm Roy Sutterby. I'm a professor of uh, strategy and entrepreneurship at the University of Victoria in Canada. This special issue was motivated by an observation that much of the research for entrepreneurship has been quantitative and has been very positivistic in its research. When we think about entrepreneurs evaluating opportunities, we always assume that the, the costly decision error is pursuing something that later proves to have a net loss. It's not a profitable opportunity and they pursue it. So, you know, the advice is be very conservative, right? Well, that assumes that there's no cost to inaction, that if you just decide not to act, that that's an okay alternative. And what we show is that at least psychologically, there is a cost to inaction. This is one of those different kinds of papers because we actually don't present passion leads to this or passion comes from that. This was really meant to develop scales so that other people could go use these scales to figure out where passion comes from or what it leads to for entrepreneurs. There is a, a debate in the literature as to whether or not entrepreneurship is an innate activity that, can be, that, that can't be taught or, or learned. The real implications for practice that came out of this was an ability to see that we all have a default learning style. And that default learning style is useful, but like uh, so many things that we do, you need to learn holistically and learn in a number of different styles. You develop in a kind of an inertial aspect around inaction, which means that you're by default going to miss opportunities because you're just kind of always remaining on the sidelines. And the longer you stay on the sidelines, the harder it is to get off the sidelines. Without robust scales that are consistent, valid, reliable, we really can't build a body of knowledge about a phenomenon. So in this case, we were not trying to prove anything or uh, show anything. We were trying to say, here are some tools that other scholars can use going forward um, to measure this phenomenon of passion. And so that it helps people to understand what their learning style is and entrepreneurs to understand how they normally would, without any other um, impetus, acquire knowledge, transform it so that they can look to find other ways to do that as well. So it's really a place to round out your learning style when you're trying to search for and develop opportunities for entrepreneurial endeavors. There is a, uh, a learning process to, to uh, understand the degree to which entrepreneurship is a socially embedded activity suggests that it can be taught and that it can be conditioned and that it is not something that is embedded in the, the creativity or the unique attributes of a single individual, but in fact there is a uh, a, a social or a community effect that uh, suggests that uh, we can create the social conditions for entrepreneurship at the family level, at the community level, and, and probably at the, at the social or the broader societal level. If you just are always talking about ideas and always evaluating opportunities and don't take any action, our research shows that you likely never will, that we need to get you moving in this direction. So I think it has some practical implications in terms of if nothing else, waking up people to this idea that there is a psychological cost in action, that it's not a costless endeavor to just pass on all these opportunities that you think you have identified. Passion is important in practice and we know that, but we need to know where it comes from and we need to know what it does for entrepreneurs and other stakeholders. And so in this paper, by developing these scales, we enable the ability to build that knowledge to help those entrepreneurs going forward entrepreneurs or would-be entrepreneurs, nascent entrepreneurs, need to develop all of these types of learning styles. So it's a way to show people that, sure, if you're an abstract conceptualist, you may also want to do some experimental learning or you may want to watch others or do other things. And from that way, you'll be able to develop better opportunities.